the world is at a tipping point. Economic progress has raised living standards and lifted millions of people out of poverty. However, global population growth and the exploitation of limited natural resources threaten our forests, oceans, climate and food security, polluting the air and water we depend on. The environmental and social costs of using natural resources are often neglected within our economies. Energy is underpriced and governments spend almost 500 billion US dollars subsidizing fossil fuels every year, over four times the amount they spend on renewable energy. Carbon and other pollutants are often emitted without an appropriate charge, while the environmental cost of using water is largely ignored. Further action is needed by all actors, including citizens, businesses, cities, states and governments to better address these imbalances. Through pricing measures and fiscal incentives, some countries are already influencing consumer and business behaviour. In the Netherlands, taxes on polluters and water use charges have helped clean up waterways and encouraged efficient water use. Thailand has improved air quality and the health of its population by incentivising the use of unleaded petrol and adopting new regulations. And in the Canadian province of British Columbia, a carbon tax has reduced fuel use and emissions while encouraging clean technology and green investment. Pricing natural resources properly not only reduces environmental damage but can also generate revenues without burdening economies. In 2015, governments raised 26 billion US dollars through carbon pricing. In Sweden, the introduction of a carbon tax allowed the government to lower labour taxes and support job creation. Additional mechanisms, such as a charge on emissions from international air travel and shipping, could raise 25 billion US dollars annually, which could be used for climate adaptation to foster cleaner technologies and create new jobs. Removing fossil fuel subsidies altogether would raise 2.9 trillion US dollars annually, while reducing global carbon emissions and premature deaths from air pollution. When carefully managed, these revenues can stimulate economic growth and help deliver other development goals. In Indonesia, revenues saved from reformed gasoline and diesel subsidies are used for infrastructure and to improve social welfare. In Mexico, revenues from water fees are used to pay for forest conservation. And in Germany, revenues from eco-taxes are used to support new jobs. The challenges are great, but there are solutions at hand. Through green fiscal reforms, our ecological footprint can be reduced. And much needed financial resources can be mobilised to help deliver global commitments to address climate change and achieve sustainable development. Find out more at www.greenfiscalpolicy.org.